Hey guys, it is Danny, and welcome to this update video on the tropics. And in this video, we're going to be talking about our systems over in the eastern Pacific as well as the potential for us to have development over in the Atlantic Basin. And we also have Tropical Storm Wanda that is moving around in the open Atlantic. And so, before I go into details, <music> Alright, so let us start off with the Eastern Pacific and we're seeing here that we have two disturbances in the basin. We have one highlighted in red which means that the chance for development is high and the other in orange which means that there is a medium chance for development. And so let's talk about that first one there that is highlighted in red. So as you're seeing, it is given a high 90% chance to potentially develop into a tropical cyclone during the next 48 hours and 5 days. And so this is likely to become a depression by later today because it has been developing quite nicely and so let's take a look at it on satellite and so we're seeing here that we have it being pretty compact it's not disorganized at all so it is looking quite well uh, well off the coast of Central America and so the next name to be used for the Eastern Pacific hurricane season is Sandra and so it is possible that we will have this developing by later today into a depression and then uh, probably a storm by tomorrow and it will eventually acquire the name Sandra so fortunately this is not looking as though it is going to be a threat to land at all it is expected to accelerate westward during most of its time in the eastern pacific basin and so in terms of what our models are expecting for its intensity we have quite a bit available and we have almost all agree that this will become a tropical storm and we have a few expecting that it is going to eventually acquire hurricane status none of our models taking it past a category one so it is likely uh, that we will have intensification of this once it remains in a conducive environment uh, that has low shear no dry air intrusion and also warm ocean temperatures so fortunately as i said this is not seeming as though it is going to be a threat to land as it is going to be making its way westward and so our next disturbance afterwards is given a 50% chance to potentially develop into a tropical cyclone and this is expected to accelerate mainly to the west northwest during the next couple of days and it is not looking as though this is going to be a threat to land either and so the next name after Sandra is Terry and so it is possible that if we have this developing after invest 93e then it will acquire the name Terry and so now let's go ahead and take a look at what is happening over in the Atlantic basin and so here we have the five day graphical tropical weather outlook and we're seeing here that we have tropical storm Wanda and we don't have any more disturbances or notable disturbances across the basin as of right now so let's talk about Wanda so as of right now Wanda has sustained winds of 50 miles per hour and it is accelerated northward at 9 miles per hour so it's expected to curve back to the south and make a turn up to the northeast uh, during the next couple of days as we're going to be ending this week and starting the new week and it is going to be at its closest to the Azores by Sunday, but fortunately, it is expected to rapidly accelerate up to the northeast. However, as we're going to be progressing into the new week, it is expected to potentially affect portions of Ireland as well as the UK as a post-tropical cyclone. So it might bring inclement weather conditions to portions of those areas. So if you're there, you might want to be cautious of that. But nothing major is expected because Wanda is expected to be much weaker and basically dissipating at the time. All right, so looking at it on satellite, here we have it. So Wanda isn't a very strong cyclone, and it has been maintaining that 50 mile per hour intensity for a while now. So it's doing quite well out there. Uh, and as the ocean temperatures decrease as it accelerates more northward, that is also going to aid in its rapid dissipation eventually. And so in terms of the Atlantic now, let us go ahead and talk about the current persistent conditions and then we will look at the potential for us to have development before this hurricane season ends. First of the sea surface temperatures and we're seeing here that we are definitely having a decrease in the ocean temperatures as the season comes to a close because the Gulf of Mexico is getting very cool right now especially the northern portion of the Gulf and that is of course anticipated because the season is ending and we are progressing into the season of winter next month so 
things are definitely going to be cooling down more as the season comes to a close. And so generally in the month of November, tropical cyclones will develop in the South Caribbean and make their way up to the north, or they might stay there sometimes. And so we have one of our models hinting towards some potential development taking place this month, but we will go to that shortly. Next, let's take a look at the wind shear. So this is a huge factor when it comes on to tropical cyclone development, because when we have a lot of unfavorable wind shear, which is marked by the red, it simply means that it is unlikely that we will have any development because that means uh, the thunderstorms within a tropical cyclone are being cut off or a developing tropical cyclone are being cut off. So this does not Aid in much development but as we go to the green or the yellow which stands for favorable or neutral respectively that means that there is a more conducive environment for us to potentially have a tropical cycle developing so we see that most of the Atlantic is in a region of unfavorable shear but for some portions of the South Caribbean and even over in the Eastern Pacific we have some favorable conditions some of that favorable shear will aid in invest 93e developing and intensifying all right, and now let's take a look at these Haran dust. So we have the different colors that indicate how dense the dust is. We have the lighter yellow shades that indicates that there is less dust. Well, as we go to the dark orange and the red, that indicates that we have more dust. And so we're seeing here that we do have that pocket out in the main development region, and we have some affecting portions of the Eastern Caribbean, such as the Lesser Antilles, as well as the Virgin Islands. So those areas are likely having hazy conditions right now as a result of the Saharan dust and so this is also a factor that helps to suppress tropical development because it is dry air and dry air prevents moisture which is what tropical cyclones need. And so now let's go ahead and take a look at two models. So first is the GFS. And so this is a map showing the isobars and the isobars are lines of equal pressure. And when you see them being in a circular manner with the pressure below to 13 millibars, that is a low pressure system that can be our tropical cyclones. So that is what we're looking for here. So this is just a prediction and this does not have to be the eventual outcome for either of the models that you're going to see. And so this is by Saturday the 6th of November and so GFS is showing that we have somewhat of some increased moisture in portions of the Caribbean and a low pressure system of Florida and so as we head further out to Tuesday the 9th we see that we have that low pressure system accelerating away from the US and in the Caribbean there isn't much activity going on but by Monday the 15th we see that there is some more increased moisture in portions of the Caribbean so GFS is not necessarily expected expecting development of anything up to the 15th of the month in the Caribbean. And so now let's go ahead and take a look at ICON. So this is Saturday the 6th of November and it is also green on that low pressure system being off the coast of Florida but showing it a little bit more south than GFS and it is showing a low pressure system in the Caribbean as well and so as we head further out to Tuesday the 9th we see that we have the system apparently trying to develop so the pressure has decreased and whenever we have a decrease in pressure it means that the system is getting stronger so by Tuesday the 9th we have icon showing that we will have this system here so could this be a potential cycle in the Caribbean so we really have to wait and see what the eventual outcome is going to be but this is not impossible but our factors that influence development the shear the dry air and the ocean temperatures have to be all conducive in order for us to have development because as we're heading into the latter part of the season we will have more unfavorable conditions than favorable conditions and so last year there were only two cyclones that developed in the month of november which were theta and iota we have to wait and see what the rest of this hurricane season has in store if it even has anything in store and then afterwards we can definitely call it a season and that will be it for this year not to say that there isn't the possibility for cyclones to develop in December because tropical cyclones can develop at any point in the year but that is mainly unlikely and so guys that is really it for this update video on the tropics and so if you found it to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts with me in the comments or ask a question I will try to respond as best and as soon as I can and just remember to always be with the wise